number uh, and only played a small, you know. And we can quickly kind of spin thing. this too into uh, Josh Dobbs a little bit. Uh, that it, it was nice getting to see him start a couple of games for the Titans because he's been in the league since 2017. He's never got a chance to start. I think if we're being objective, he did. He did a lot of good things. He did. He he, he let his inexperience show a couple of times. Could have, and, and a lot of that had to do with not being in the offense. But since what December 21st, 22nd, I mean, he hasn't been there very long. There's a couple of things where he could have thrown the hot route, or you know, got the ball out a little quicker, maybe slid protections, little minor things. But outside of that, I thought he played really well, and he gave the Titans a chance to win the game. And the mistakes that were made. Also, a lot of that's on the offensive line for breaking down, allowing guys to get to him. Uh, I know it wasn't a great situation for Dobbs to make his first couple of starts, but after watching what Malik Willis did in that offense, I thought Dobbs played really well and can get, can be a spot start guy for you at minimum. I, I mean he, it. Yeah, I mean he can he can jump in there and play with with a with a with an offensive line that is. But that same offensive line with a different player other than Dennis Daly, with that mixed with a better offensive coordinator, Dobbs not only wins that game, I think they like, I don't want to say run away with it, but Jacksonville played terrible in that game. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence did zero to win that game. Oh, Tre- Trevor Lawrence. I said it to you before we got on here. Trevor Lawrence got that uh, that lemon booty. He's he got <laughs> He was scared out there, man. He was just... Yeah, he, he said some jokes. I mean, he he couldn't deliver when it mattered, and Dobbs got out there and was just calm, collected, got it done. And he, you know, the the fumble happened because Dennis Daly sucks. You eliminate that, the Titans win that single play. The Titans win, um, and then uh, with a better offensive coordinator, I think they probably score twenty four points in that game and and win by like eight points. And like I, I you know, all credit to Dobbs. Yeah, he's not. If he, per se, Tannehill gets shipped out and for some reason he's our starter next year, and we're probably not winning a Super Bowl with the guy. But he's serviceable at a baseline, and I think could be pretty... He's just he's really smart, man. He just really grasps concepts well, and, and he... With that offensive line, he panicked on a few plays and missed some things, but, like, you know, it, that's kind of the nature of that position when your offensive line is absolute garbage. So all the credit in the world to Josh Dobbs in that game did it in just a more than admirable effort that he gave there. I can't think of him enough. It was so fun to just see a Tennessee guy out there and until the fumble, <laughs> until the fumble that gave the Jags the lead back. I mean, I was about to be just absolutely ecstatic. I, I even was, was one of the people on the fence where I was like, I kind of hope we lose so that this thing gets ripped apart. Like I'm like a, Tear it down. We, you know, making the playoffs gives Rabel an ex- excuse to not do anything. And I was almost one of those people. But when Dobbs became the starter, I was like, man, I want to see Dobbs win. I want yeah. Dobbs to get a chance in a playoff game. That would be so fun. And, you know, to honestly, to see it stolen on a play that, in my personal opinion, was an incomplete pass uh, is gross. And he gave such a great effort. But, is what it is. The t- that offensive line is just so bad. What are you gonna do? and the and the set of wide receivers so bad? Like, yeah. ugh. Um, is what it is. But man, I will love, say with with, with Dobbs, I saw some somebody tweeted about it, and, and I hadn't thought about it in this way. And I think somebody tweeted at me. It's surprising that Dobbs hadn't at least got a spot start in six years. I mean, you stick around in the NFL for six years, and you expect at some point. You mean, I mean, Nathan Peterman's had several starts and we saw how awful he was at Tennessee but somebody brought up was like is he a at Tennessee Dobbs was not a good practice player we saw his practices at times and they weren't great I remember in 2013 Josh Dobbs is a true freshman and Butch Jones came in and you had Justin Worley Nathan Peterman and Riley Ferguson all on the roster and you had four quarterbacks and I remember going to those practices and watching what little bit they let us see and even just throwing routes and, and running through drills, Dobbs looked like the worst of the four through those practices. I thought Riley Ferguson looked way better than what he ended up being. At times, I thought Nate Peterman looked like the, the, he should be starting over Justin Worley. Uh, and I think Butch obviously went with Worley because of the experience. But I understood based on practice not playing Dobbs. 
And then when he got in games in 2013, second half of 2014, last two years he's the starter, we saw the dude just plays well under the lights. He wasn't perfect. He'd be off target on his throws. He was high on throws a lot at Tennessee. But, he, I mean, without Dobbs, you know, Butch Jones is, does not survive 2015, maybe not even 2014 because of the way that he helped them get to a bowl eligibility with that come back at South Carolina. So you got to wonder, was that the case in the NFL too, where he's good enough to stay on the roster, but he wasn't really showing anything in practice for them to trust him with the starting. And the Titans really had no choice after the Malik Willis disaster and Tannehill's injury, they had to turn to Dobbs and they really had nothing to lose. I mean, they, they probably felt like they weren't going to make the playoffs anyway, the way it was trending. And then if you're starting a guy off the street that was on the Lions practice squad, you know, up until right before Christmas, you kind of got a built-in excuse there with with the injuries, which I know Charlie does not take that as a, a, a proper excuse. But no. the national viewpoint, they're going to give him a little bit of leeway this season because of Tannehill and those injuries. Uh, maybe Dobbs showed enough in those two games. Hopefully, I'd like to see the Titans give him a chance as a backup, but I feel like somebody in the NFL is going to bring him in to at least be a number two uh, if, if the Titans don't. I hope they do. I, I hope that when I say that, I hope the well, Titans come on to him. Somebody bring, um, Valentino brings up how was Malik a disaster? I, I'm not saying his career is a disaster. I don't. I don't think that at all. I mean, he couldn't complete a forward pass. Yeah, I mean, he he didn't do anything to help the Titans win. I'm not saying know. that they should give up on him. And we they knew he was raw when they drafted him. So I'm not suggesting that Titans like cut bait and move on from Willis. But at this point in his career, he's not the guy that's going to go out there and win you a football game. I think he may be. I I, I don't know. This is a hundred percent speculation on my part. He may be a part of the set of players that got uh, J. Rob fired. Uh, you know, kind of like what were you evaluating? What were you looking at? I mean, he he couldn't complete a pass. I, I what more? What more do you want to say? I mean, Valentin. He says Dobbs didn't either. Yes, he did. Dobbs did complete passes. He did, though. Th that pass, that touchdown pass against Jacksonville is better than most of the passes that Ryan Tannehill threw all season. I mean, like I said, Dobbs, Dobbs wouldn't win you a Super Bowl, I don't think. But, dude, that pass? Yeah, I'm not Willis ain't doing anything like that. I'm not like, propping uh, Dobbs up as a future NFL starter. Like, Listen, there's 32 teams that could have employed him, and they didn't until the Titans did. He's on a practice squad, so... You've got to trust those front office evaluations more than me or, or a lot of people that are just watching him, uh, you know, uh, on Sundays. But I, I still think he was better than Willis, and he showed that he can be play a more important role than what he has been playing in the NFL the last five, six years. It It's a cool thing to think about if, if Dobbs could be a part of the, the Titans. Obviously, I mean, he, he's he a talked great about guy to have, too. He's a great locker yeah. room guy. The, the team loves him. He knows he blends in well. He doesn't walk in there. Like, he just, there's some people that walk into a situation and they just, it's awkward. They don't fit in immediately. They don't know what to say. They don't know when to be reserved, when to speak up. And Dobbs kind of has that self awareness where he knows how to fit in. He knows when to speak up, when not to, how to carry himself. And, and that's really important, especially for a backup quarterback, because that can be a, a very awkward role. D despite what Joe Milton and Hendon Hooker did this year, that's that's not the norm. I mean, I don't know if you keep up with the Steelers. You go look at Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett, and that, that situation's ugly. I mean, Trubisky is making comments this week about should have taken more time before he signed and thought he deserved more time before he got benched for Pickett, who's obviously the better, you know, answer there those situations can be weird i feel like if, you, if the titans keep dobbs no matter what happens at the starting position next year with Tannehill, or they go out and get somebody bring in a veteran aaron Rodgers, tom brady garoppolo i mean there's lots of different ways they could think about going i feel like dobbs is just the perfect guy to be the number two behind them and and to help them because he is, he's accepted that role and he's embraced it and he can be like another coach there on the staff and, and kind of help and that communication I, could be very important. Yeah, I I would love it because I think Tannehill has been absolutely predisposed to injury. Now that Downing is fired, praise be. <laughs> um, I I hopefully that offense will improve and maybe they can use Derrick Henry more effectively in the twilight of his career here. I mean, I think the season kind of proved he's a little bit he's on the downslope now. He's um, still, he still have fifteen hundred yards this year. Yeah, he's he's still great. 
and, crazy. And, but, that's like, oh, it was an okay just, year. Just think what you could do if it wasn't just what Todd Downing always called. Run just, left on first down every time. Just running him right into a, a packed box on every first down. What if you didn't do that? Maybe he could go for a few more yards. Who knows? Unreal. So maybe with a new offensive coordinator, they can they can do more. And then when I don't want to say when Tannehill gets hurt, I hope he doesn't get hurt. But if if they keep Dobbs and Tannehill does get hurt, um, Dobbs could be right there and kind of be maybe a little Ryan Ryan Fitzpatrick action. He could sort of be like, uh, hey, that backup's pretty good. Look at him. Get him get himself a nice contract going forward. He's still he's young ish. What is he? Seven, twenty eight, I think. I mean, quarterbacks. You got time. 35, 36. Fitzpatrick went forever. Yeah. Fitzpatrick went until he was like 40. Tom Brady's 45. Uh, oh. So I, I he love it. I five years old in Nashville next year, 46, whatever. Say that again. I said, Tom Brady might be 46 years old playing in Nashville next year. You never, you <laughs> never know. True. Come on down, Tom. Look, we man, get, I, so we after, a lot. <laughs> after a lot, I mean, I know those are crazy scenarios and nobody really knows what will happen with all that. But after the last NFL offseason when, you know, Tyreek Hill going to the Dolphins and Devontae Adams getting traded and then Garoppolo was certainly going to be traded till he wasn't. I mean, all these crazy things happening. I don't rule anything out. Like, teams are desperate to win. And Mike Vrabel wants to win. And they might do something crazy like that. We'll see. 